Hey everyone, Miranda Patron back here with you to do a fun Christmas mandala, holiday colors, reds and greens. In this video, I'll be using Deco Art Acrylics from the Dazzling, from the Americana, from the Extreme Machine, just a nice mixture of fun colors. I'll also be using the dotting tools. And we'll be doing this on the large oval stone, which I made from the mold at the Happy Dotting Company. Alright, so as always, the items I use in the video, I will post links for in the description along with a coupon to get your own molds from the Happy Dotting Company, including this large oval. She's on Etsy. So here we have the large oval stone, and I've just painted it matte black the entire way around. And then I just measured the stone so I could put my center point here. And then I measured it out about a five, five and a half by three, three and a half to find the center. And then I just etched out some guidelines here so you guys can see that's the center. And then I just did the plus hash marks to find our center. So on the stone too, the five inch by three and a half, I used my compass. And I just drew a three and a quarter inch diameter circle around. So if you just wanted to do the center design, it's just a three and a quarter inch diameter circle. And I just trace that right here onto my stone. Okay, so I'm using the half inch acrylic rod. And that's going to be for our center dot. And I'm going to go with the titanium white or snow white and then I just get a good amount on the tool now these already have great consistency I don't mix anything in with these paints and I just gently touch it down to my stone to create the first center dot that I want here Okay, next up I'm grabbing my etcher tool and using the gold side and still the white. I'm going to start off with my plus sign here. And I put this etcher tool in my shop as well if you're looking for this. So with the plus sign you're doing the 90 degree angles and then you can do the 45 degree angles and then just kind of fill in the dots in between and this will help you keep the symmetry of your first row of dots going around the center and therefore it will assist you with your symmetry throughout the piece as long as you just keep on making uniform sized dots for the most part and tucking them all in the same spots then you'll keep the symmetry of your design. I'm just stealing paint from the center here so I don't have to go over to the palette because my center is still wet, but it is still the white for the first row. Okay, next up I am using Fruit Punch Multi-Surface and this etcher tool as well. So these are about the same size dot as the white. I'm just tucking them in between the spaces of the first row of white that we put down. Now I'm going to go with celery green and about the one and a half millimeter dotting stylus. So not the largest, it's kind of in the middle of the road as far as the ball size on the end. And I'm just using the celery green to go in between our dots of fruit punch. But you can see too, I'm not even following the guidelines now at this point. I'm just kind of tucking them in to keep the symmetry with my dots as opposed to the lines because that's something you don't want to stress too much about just relax and I can even erase these now because I did them with my etcher so it's just a little bit of water to erase them makes it easy to get rid of guidelines just by using the etcher tool all right desert cactus and this two millimeter stylus which is the blue one on my set one thing I want to mention are the holes that you can see they were bubbles. I mixed gypsum and powders plaster. I do not recommend that. It was the last of both of which I had. 
and I tried mixing them to make this stone, but see the holes that it left for the bubbles? So there are ways to get rid of that, but also I could have just filled it with gesso. Okay, in between our desert cactus, I'm just going to tuck a few dots here of the oyster pearl with the etcher. And I'm just going to take my compass at the one inch mark now just because I want to do some dots a little farther out and I can't space them out symmetrically as easily. So I'm going to go with this acrylic rod and the crystal green and it allows me to keep them the same distance away from the desert cactus green row. And we're just going to do the eight around. Okay, so now I'm using Tuscan Red and the Etcher tool. And at that circle we drew out about an inch diameter, I'm just going to start putting some swipes down here in the very center in between our emerald greens. And so really I'm just dotting and then I just drag the paint down to make the tail. And don't be too hard on yourself. I've been doing these for years, so you kind of get an idea of how much to gauge the paint, to, how much to put on it to drag it out. So now with the berry wine, I know I want to go a little bit shorter, so I don't want as much paint on. I'm just kind of dropping it off to the sides here and then pull it down into a swipe. And we'll do that berry wine on either side. And then we start to get this cute little collection of swipes here. All right, back to the fruit punch. And I'm putting much less. You can see it's only covering the tip of my etcher tool. Much less paint on the tool. So it does make a smaller little swipe here and doesn't just glob the paint on. And those are on either side of the burgundy wine. Just kind of filling in the space down here underneath. Okay, so the oyster pearl and our two millimeter, I'm gonna just put a little dot underneath the emerald green and in between the little elements of the red swipes. Okay, now I'm gonna take that oyster pearl and this is about three, I don't know, just under half an inch that rod was just to put a dot in the center. Okay, so back to the titanium white. We're gonna do a ring of the white dots with the etcher around each of our emerald green dots here. And you don't have to do anything special, but as the paint runs off the tool, it makes the dots smaller. Okay, switching to Peridot now, and my smallest daughter. I'm just going to do a little swipe from the top here down to our reds. And we'll do this on both sides. I'm just heading in one direction first, just muscle memory helps me that way, but whatever you feel comfortable doing, I'm just doing a quick little swipe down the side. And then we'll flip it and we'll do the other side here. And I'm just leaving enough space at the top so I can put a dot of another color up there. Maybe we'll go with a lighter green, but just leave a little space at the top so you can put a dot up there just for this design. So we're using the peridot just to kind of do some swipes to hug that green emerald dot. All 
All right, we'll go with matcha. And we'll put that dot at the top of the matcha. Just tuck it right in between where we started the swipes and just left a little bit of space there. It gives it just a little different look. And maybe we'll tuck some down here at the base of each of the red elements. We'll do the matcha with the small dotting tool on either side. You can see it got a little cozy in here, but I'm just still going to tuck a little one in there. So my spacing is not perfect either. You guys, don't be so hard on yourselves. Just enjoy the painting time. Okay, back to eucalyptus leaf. And we're going to do some more dots. I think maybe we'll do two rings of dots here around each of these little elements. And when the largest dot is at the top and let the paint run off your tool so they get smaller, it kind of creates that petal effect. So it'll come to a point at the top. And again, I'm just doing this side first and then I'll go back and do the left side next. So too, you know, you can think about doing other designs in the future. If you had just kept doing dots on one side, it kind of creates that pinwheel effect. Each time you can make a totally different mandala, even using the same paint colors, it would just have been a different pattern. But for this, for today's design, we're going to do both sides. So while I'm doing this, I just want to reach out to you all for some reason, Facebook and Instagram have, I don't know if they're freezing my account. I'm not really sure what's going on, but I am trying to write back to you all in response on many things, but they are deleting them and freezing my account. Instagram has frozen my account. I haven't even gotten a new follower or lost any followers in six months. So I'm not sure what is going on with their algorithms and stuff, but I'm still here and you can reach me at my website because I can, it goes right to my email and then I can answer you guys questions from there or feel free to comment in the comments here at YouTube. Um, they, apparently I'm not controversial with my painting, <laughs> not a problem here on YouTube. So they're, uh, they're letting freedom reign here in the comments, but I'm not sure what is going on with Instagram and Facebook. And I apologize if anybody's asked me questions or wanted me to get back to you. It's, I'm not sure what is going on. I even created the new Facebook page in hopes that it was just something wrong with my old one, but it's not, it's something is happening and they're not letting me communicate with people. So I get some notifications, others I don't. It's all very bizarre and random and I love you all and I want to hear from you. So please, please, please feel free my website or here in the comments to say hi or ask questions. All right, so with that eucalyptus being a little bit darker, I'm going to go and do every other. So just where the red elements are, we'll give a top dot here. And now with the fruit punch, let's do a little dot, tuck it in here. And then I think we'll switch up our shape to an oval dot after with using the silicone tool. And it's still the fruit punch. And we're just gonna gently tuck an oval here at the top of each of the red elements. And I am touching the surface. The paint is thin enough that you can touch the surface. If you have thick paint, it's going to leave a peak. If you push down hard and then pick up, it's going to leave peaks in your paint, which is fine. If that's the look you're going for, that's totally fine. But I am pressing down a little bit just to even out both sides of my ovals and just kind of rock it back and forth. And I'll just touch that one up a little bit because it didn't want to cover. All right, now Oyster Pearl. I'm just gonna go and dot our entire circle 
to kind of delineate this mandala area in the center and that way I can do a different design outside of this circle at the ends of my oval stone. And this also too, if you really enjoy having the guide of lines, you could even have done this circle first and then it would help you stay within the confines of the circle so that you didn't extend your mandala out past where you wanted to go. So there's a lot of, you know, starting in the center first just for symmetry, but you could have done this row for your circle in the beginning and then you could have stayed within the confines of that to kind of help as a guideline too. So there's plenty of different ways to do these. First and foremost, just let it be enjoyable for your time painting. It's really, really what it's about. And these times we all need some sort of escape, right? Let's go create something pretty and just have some time to ourselves. Listen to some music or a book or just take some time to be calm. And you get to the end sometimes, I just have to tuck them in a little closer, but you won't be able to tell the difference. <laughs> so now on top of the fruit punch, I'm just putting a dot of the Tuscan red at the base of the oval. So it's not in the middle, it's at the base of the oval. Just to kind of draw your eye down in with the reds. And these are so rich almost on my screen, you almost can't, can't really decipher between the two, but... I'm just going to give myself a little guide here to show you. I want to start in the center to do some swipes from the outside here in. And then that way I know I'm kind of, I just eyeball the center, but you could always measure it. But that way too, I know that I'm in the center with the first swipe and I can work my way down the sides with the other. So moving on to Desert Cactus. And it's just a little bit of an arc in, because, you know, the top end is fatter. So I'm just kind of cuddling the tails into one another. <laughs> so desert cactus on either side. Next up is celery green. And I'm just going to do the same here. Pull it down with the etcher tool. And now you can do these with brushes as well. You can do these with your dotting tools. It's just whatever you're most comfortable with. And in the poll, you all told me you wanted me to go with the tools. So this one is with the tools. All right, matcha green. So these ones are getting a little shorter and a little more angled. If you can see from the side view there, it's just a little bit shorter so that I'm not overlapping the edge, but also staying in line with the ones that I've already done so that you have that uniform arc together. And of course, we have to throw in some of this peridot. And this one is a little more fluid. I don't know if it's because my studio is really chilly. <laughs> I'm here like by three windows, so... And yep, it's going to start bleeding into my other one. So as you can see on the bottom, it bled into my matcha, which I will go back and fix at a later point. But really, I just wait for it to dry, scrape it out, put a little black between them, and then touch them up. It's not a major overhaul. But I have to wait for them to dry to do that for this one because they just decided to grow like a lichen on one another. <laughs> So while we're waiting for that to dry, let's tuck some white dots here in between each of the oyster pearl dots that we put down. You can see the white's a little bit brighter, less metallic. I think it's just enough to kind of give that beaded look in here. And it just kind of fills in the black a little bit too. And again, this is just the edger tool, so it would be 
a, a toothpick or your smallest tool you have just to do the tiny, tiny dots. I've even used mechanical pencils and a pinch the lead. You just dip the lead and you can paint with that as well. So if you don't want to spring for tools or if you're just looking to try this out, you have all these things around the house. Pencil erasers, toothpicks, mechanical pencil lead. You can dot with all that. Just start dipping stuff. All right, so burgundy wine. Let's tuck a couple of the red in the side here just to kind of do one little dot above on our ovals. Okay, so a little bit of a closer look here with the oyster pearl. I'm just going to throw a couple of swipes in the side here. And then do a little one of fruit punch in here as well. And I'm not loading as much onto this one because these are smaller, shorter swipes. I actually had too much on there. So I'm going to do the other swipes with the same amount that I put on the tool for one. <laughs> All right. And the last one will be the Tuscan red. We'll just tuck a little one up under here. And it gives us that kind of continuation of all the colors throughout to the edges. So now I'm just going to do three dots of every color we used for the swipes. Let's see on the side. One, two, three. So for each color of swipe that you use, just do three top dots at the top to just kind of finish off the edge here. And I'm just doing them tiny. This is the etcher tool. So just matching them up with each of the colors from your swipes, from the desert, eucalyptus, the celery, the matcha, the peridot, and then we'll grab the white. Yeah, I'm a little off screen here. Sorry, guys. Again, I want to just thank you all for bearing with this studio, kind of temporary. I'm, I'm working on it here in my living room, so <laughs> it's a work in progress, and I look forward to hearing whatever comments you think can help me out to work it while I'm at home, and I have kids running around, and all of that, super fun, <laughs> so the lighting changes and everything, you guys have been awesome and super patient, and I really appreciate you being that way with me, it's not easy, <laughs> but that's how life goes, right, we have to just kind of roll with the punches and go with the flow. <laughs> All right, down to my reds, three dots of each of those. So we are done with this little guy. So here it is complete. You did it. We made it through this design. Super fun. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to see what it looks like varnished. And I actually have a new clear top coat we're going to try out here. We're going to go 100% with Deco Art products and go with their new, it's, well it's not super new, but it's an acrylic pouring top coat that is, it, it almost looks like resin when it's dried. It's pretty amazing. So I'm going to test it out here to cover my stone on this one and I will show it to you as well. So, clear pouring top coat from DecoArt. I hate to waste products, so what I'm going to do is try brushing it on first and give it a go and see how it looks there. And then we'll just kind of pour it on here as much as I can so we're not overworking it. And then I'm just going to kind of tilt it and brush it around so that it covers in all the spots here. And it's very thick. Now they say pour it on and then leave your piece at a 45 degree angle. I'm not sure if they were prepared for it to be used on stones, <laughs> but uh, I have my thing at a, a bit of an angle here and I'm going to try to babysit the drips. I'm not going to make you watch all that, but just telling you my plan here to see how that goes. 
And while we're waiting for that, I'm going to talk to you about felt bottoms. So on the base here, when you make your stone, you're going to have like this ring here for the ovals, but at the bottom of the candle holders, everything, there's kind of that lip from the mold, which is fine. No one ever sees the back. But if you're setting it on things like a dresser or anything, I have been using felt to back it. So in my shop, if you just go over here in the digital download section, I have a pattern where you can trace out the felt so that you can cut your own adhesive felt to put on the back of your stones. So I already measured them. I have them for the hearts, the large round, I have them for the tea lights, and then I also have it here for the large oval. And all you do is you print it out, you cut yourself a little stencil, and then you put it on the back of the felt, trace it, cut it out, and the self-adhesive felt, you just stick it to the back of your stone, and then you have something that you can just rest the stone on um, so that it doesn't leave a mark on it. So here on Amazon, there's the self-adhesive foam. I mean felt, sorry, not foam. And I'll put a link for all these things in the description for you guys so you can check it out and see if that's something you want to try see here they can just cut out whatever shapes you want you can put it back on natural stone and that way you're, you're not scratching up the things where you're placing your stones so then i just stick it to the back here and set it wherever i want another thing i will do i'll say i use easels and this is just a four inch easel which I have in my shop too, but that's about the size probably for the large oval stone. You can take the easels and then just kind of tuck it into the easel. And let me show you here from afar. It will cover up a little bit of your design, but it makes a great little display for your stones. And this one doesn't cover up too much of the design. It's not bad. So that's just another way that you can display your stones if you haven't thought of that yet. Just a little easel. I think it's fun then you're creating that really that piece of art that you can display around your home or give them as gifts all right another question I get asked quite a lot is how do I have color inspiration how do I know what color combos any of that so if I get stuck and don't feel like I'm coming up with something I like I have a whole thing here called color palettes yay on my Pinterest where you'll see the latest thing that I've been looking at um, color wise just to get some inspiration or go and find a color combination that I really like that I think will work with whatever stone or canvas or whatever I'm painting at the time so you'll be able to see probably before anyone else if you go to my Pinterest what colors I'm looking at recently and what will probably be the next thing coming up on a video but for this one you can see it shows them through here okay so our stone is now dry with that top core uh, pouring coat. I did pour it again on this after I brushed it. It wasn't cloudy or anything. It just didn't cover as well as I had wanted it to. So I did pour it and I had to babysit the back where the drips were coming because it will dry. I hope you guys enjoy this. I absolutely love the holidays. I'm sure you all do as well. And I hope I will start seeing this design pop up because everyone's going to check it out. All right. Say hi in the comments. I look forward to chatting with you all. Remember, email, website. All right. Thanks for watching.